everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started.
hello, hello. Can you hear me now? Cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Yes? default can you hear me now okay okay I'll just keep the settings I'll keep the settings that I have off to figure out to troubleshoot that I don't know why that wasn't working I think my default wasn't on my microphone okay well welcome sorry for that little hiccup I'm glad that I had people here to tell me that it wasn't working because on my end it looked like everything was working and I'm glad that y'all said something. <laughs> okay, well, um, let's kind of start over. Hi, welcome to another live class. I'm excited to be here and to be painting. I was saying that I always love doing these sorts of paintings that don't have people or animal or man-made things. It's all nature. It's a lot easier um, to paint and especially for beginners, it's a lot of fun. Um, and even for me, it's fun. Um, I enjoy painting um, just nature and these sorts of things. Also, I love painting clouds and these have some fun colored clouds. So I'm excited to um, get in. And this is like kind of our like Bob's, Bob Ross style, kind of easy nature um, stylistic painting. Um, so, but obviously it's an acrylic. So I'm excited to um, get painting with you. I'm gonna go over some supplies so hopefully you are all ready with all your supplies um, while I do have a traceable because this is more of a nature um, it's beginner class if you uh, want to just paint along with me that is a-okay um, but if you do want a traceable I do have that available in my patreon it's pinned in the message it'll be added to the description um, and it's also on my Facebook page you can go and look it up um, my patreon is uh, for the traceable tier, it's $5 a month, but you can get in and only get, you know, the one traceable you want, or you can um, have access to literally every traceable that I've ever done for any of my live classes. Um, so you can get in and then, you know, download whatever you need. You can stay for a month. You can stay for longer. It's totally up to you. It's a way to support me and also um, a way for me to give back to the community. Um, so if you would like the traceable, it is available. Um, sometimes for things like this, um, I don't tend to use a traceable for more nature inspired um, paintings because I like to, I don't know, I like to be more natural with it. Um, but for somebody who might not be comfortable with that, I do have a traceable available. So just letting you know um, that I'm not going to be using it. But if you need that, if you're a super beginner and you're uncomfortable with figuring out where everything is going, um, that is for you, right? Um, so I have that available in my Patreon. Um, and it's just at the $5 tier. You don't need to do any of the other tiers. But at the $10 tier, um, I do have other traceables available, exclusive tra traceables for my Patreon. Um, so you can also do that if you also get traceables in classes. So just depending on what you want. Um, for my canvas, I'm using an 11 by 14 uh, canvas. Uh, you can use whatever whatever size you want. I do have a traceable for an 11 by 14, which is what you just saw, and then a nine by 12. If you're a patron um, and you ever need a different size traceable for any of the classes, um, just comment on that traceable post and be like, hey, I'm painting, you know, a 16 by 20 or whatever, whatever it is that you're painting, um, eight by 10. And I'll, it's really easy to downsize or upsize it um, and re-upload it to that file, to that post. Um, so if you're a patron and you need a different size, just let me know and I can, I can, it's really easy to upload it. Okay. Um, I have my water. I have two waters just in case I need clean, clean water. Um, but I have my water, my paper towel, my palette. Um, and then I also have a Huh, dirty palette knife, um, but I also have a palette knife for mixing. It's really, really helpful. I use it every single class for pre-mixing colors, and especially when you're doing beginner classes. Um, for those of you who don't really, uh, you're not familiar with how acrylics work or blending and things like that, um, having a palette knife that you can pre-mix colors 
is going to be really, really helpful in the long run um, of being able to pre-mix your uh, paints. And not to say that you can't do that with a brush, but I enjoy doing it with a flat palette and a palette knife because then I don't, I don't lose paint in my, um, my paintbrush. I don't get streaks of unmixed paint on my canvas and I don't muddy up my water before I've even started painting. So that's just my, um, my choice for mixing paint pre, uh, pre painting, but, um, obviously you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but I do have all of my supplies are on my Amazon shop. So if you're curious as to what I use or, um, and, or you want to look at that and you want to buy it, I do have it on my Amazon shop, which is also linked below. Uh, as for brushes, I'm just going to get out my normal, um, my typical brushes that I use for all my classes. I have a large filbert. If you have a, um, a large flat brush or anything like that you, that you want to use for the bathroom, for the background, that's totally fine. I like to use a, um, I like to use a filbert for it because I feel like it blends better and it has less streaks. I like, you know, you don't have the corner of the brush. Um, I just feel like it blends better. Um, and then I will also have my small filbert. And then I have two round brushes, one that's kind of pointed and one that's a little bit more round. And then I have, this is my cloud brush. I call it my texture brush, my cloud brush, um, my dry brush effect brush um, when I'm doing dry brushing, um, which is just essentially just paint and no water. Um, this is really helpful for clouds and you're gonna wanna have a brush that you can, uh, that's maybe a little bit frayed or um, that you're okay messing up. So I only use this brush for this technique because as you can see, um, it is not, as you can see, can I have, I don't know, can you see that? Um, it's very much like frayed on the sides of it. It's not like a perfectly pointed brush. Um, and this is because I go in circles and I rough it all up and I go, I go against the, the bristles. I go against the grain essentially on it. Um, and it essentially quote unquote ruins the brush, but this is my, this is the brush that I use for that. And I want that. So have a brush that you're either willing to kind of mess up a little bit or add texture. Um, if you only do it this once, it's not going to mess it up, but if you're gonna, if you like doing clouds, it's really important that you have a brush that has the ability to be a little bit more messed up so that you can add that texture. And it's really fun to add that texture. Um, if you've never done clouds with me, it's really fun. You're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. Um, it's a lot easier than one might think it's going to be, okay? Uh, so those are the brushes. And then I also have this little scraper um, that I like to clean off my palette with. Um, other things that you might need uh, is uh, some tape if you want to get a nice line uh, for your horizon. If you're not, you know, if you don't, if you have a hard time doing like straight lines and stuff like that. Sometimes I even do it just to get that initial straight line and then I pull it off and I go over it again. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to use that. Um, these are all, whether it's traceable, um, palette knife. Uh, tape. They're all artist tools that we get to use. None of it's cheating. Um, so if you're thinking that, get that out of your brain. It's not cheating. They're just tools that we use as artists. Okay. Uh, lastly, let's go over the, uh, let's go over the paints. So I have my white and my black, obviously my white, my black. And then I have my raw umber. I have phthalo blue. I have um, green, which is all going to be in the waters, and then for the um, for the sky, I have my pink and my yellow. Now, if you want, if you don't have pink and you wanted to add like a orange or a red, I do have orange and red, kind of like on hand, just in case I need a little bit of that. Um, I will say that this has a little bit more of a corally um sky so but i think i'll be able to get that from the pink and the yellow because pink and yellow equal like an orange color and that plus the white i think will be okay um but there is also kind of that purpley cloud which will be able to get through the pink and the blue so um, we're gonna have a lot of fun okay so uh let's go ahead and 
and let's see, uh, does anybody have any questions so far? I want to go over announcements um, after we do our initial sketch so that people have time to sketch it out. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. The first thing I'm going to do is with my blue and my white, I'm going to just put in the tiniest bit of blue and white so that I can um, draw on. I'm gonna go ahead and draw on my kind of like what would be my traceable, like my outline. All right, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. And it doesn't need to be very dark, it's mostly white. And this color doesn't necessarily matter, but um, you don't want it too dark that you're gonna, it's a color that you're gonna have to be able to like cover up later. Um, so I'm gonna grab my brush, get a, a good amount of water. We're just gonna mix this in with our water. And I'm gonna figure out where I want my, um, where I want my horizon, sorry, my brain is not working, my horizon, um, and it looks like it's a little bit below half, so if this is my halfway mark, I'm going to go a little bit below there, and I'm just going to take this, it's roughly here, and we can come in and put, you know, use our, um, use our line or like our tape later but this is just so that when I'm coming down because we're going to do the background first um, when I'm coming down with my background I know how far to go down um, that's important because you don't want to end up only coming down to here and realize that you didn't come down far enough and then you have to move the whole horizon up which is fine if that happens but sometimes it's nice to just have this all right so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do um, this little uh, sand dune right here, it goes, it meets the horizon and then it comes down. And this kind of comes down all the way to about, about here. So I went down to there, but it looks like this is a little bit more steep, steeper than I anticipated. hill right here. What's nice about doing it in this watery um, texture is that let's say I did that and I don't want that. So I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm just going to wipe it off or just put it in a way that it's not distracting to me and I know which line I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to go back to this top one And I'm just going to make a little wobbly line. This comes out. There's another little one right here. And this part is not really necessary, but um, sometimes I like to like get a visual to see if I want to change or keep anything, is I'm just gonna take this very, very watery blue, and I'm just going to kind of color in what would be blue on here, and this comes out here, kind of just, I'm 
like that. Okay, I'm liking it. So then there's another one over here that starts a little bit under the horizon line. See that? It comes down, it's pretty sharp, it comes down. And again, your sand dunes do not have to look exactly like this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do the water line. And the little splash that's right here. Just really vaguely. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just getting those base uh, outlines and colors in there. If you would have done the um, traceable, then these lines will already be there for you and you won't have to um, do any of that. So while you guys finish that, um, I'm going to go ahead and post my Facebook page because that is where I spend most of my time. Um, so if you're not a part of our Facebook community um, or just on Facebook in general, um, please go follow me there. That's where I post new classes, polls, uh, what's going on in Patreon, all that sort of thing. Um, and it's really where I spend 90, 99% of um, my time. I post other videos there. Um, and just inspiration. Um, but if you want to be a part of my uh, community, um, that's probably going to be um, either my Facebook community where you can uh, post your work um, or it's going to be in my Patreon. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, last week, we did this little guy. Super cute, kind of related to what we're painting now. Um, so if you like this sort of thing, this was really fun. Um, it came out a little bit more realistic than I was intending to, but it was a lot of fun. Um, so if you like pineapples, if you like beachy sort of vibes, uh, feel free to go, uh, go onto my YouTube, um, and paint this one. This one was a lot of fun. And then next we have my Patreon class. So I've, I've talked about the magenta level, about the $10 tier where you get exclusive classes. Um, so we did this this month. Every month I do a new tutorial just for my Patreons, uh, for my patrons in Patreon. Um, and this month we did this one. We did a cherry blossom bouquet. Um, I think it came out very nice. It's very chic. I love the colors um, and the pop of the yellow and the blues. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this one. So if you want to go uh, paint this one, that one's in my Patreon for the $10 level and you'll also get access to all of the uh, traceables for my live classes as well. So it's kind of a twofold, um, a twofold thing. And then lastly in my Patreon, um, every month uh, with my Cobalt tier, which is the $20 tier, we go week to week and we paint a little bit each week and we are working on a turtle, kind of also sea related. Um, so if you like turtles or you like sea life this one's going to be a lot of fun it already is fun um we did our first session we did most of the background and then yesterday we finished this these two corals 
and um, the outline silhouette of the turtle. And next week, we're probably going to be adding um, more fishies and other uh, fun coral. Uh, there's a lot going in in this photo, but I'm really excited um, with just how it's turning out. And I love turtles. I've been wanting to do a turtle since our live turtle we, I did a few years ago. So I'm really excited to be doing a turtle. All right, hopefully you all have this done and we are ready to move on. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this. So uh, let's go ahead and create our background uh, color. Now, if you wanted to do a normal blue color, that is totally fine. We are doing a pink sky today because why not? I'm going to go ahead and get out my pink. If you don't have pink, go ahead and get out your red and you're just going to add, um, you're going to add your red and maybe a little bit of yellow to it. But I have my pink. I have, I need to get out my more white. And then you'll also want to get out some yellow. All right, so most of this is white, so I'm just going to take a chunk of this white and a little bit of pink and a tiny bit of yellow. And we're just going to see where we land. Okay, I can see that I'm, it's coming out a little bit more on the orange side, yellow-orange side. So I'm going to go ahead and add more pink. So this is pretty much the color that I want, but I can tell already that I do not have enough paint. So bear in mind that you're painting more than half of the canvas with this amount of paint, so I, I will need more paint than that. So I'm going to go ahead and add some white, and then I'll just need to add more pink and more yellow to this. So I'm not necessarily trying to change the color, I'm just trying to add more to it. A bit more pink. Okay. So once you get a color that you like and the amount that you think will work. off my palette knife. All 
guys, depending on what you want, I initially put some blue up here when I, when I created this reference, but I think I'm just going to have it all pink. I think I'm just going to do pink. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my large filbert. And what I'm going to do is the first, we're going to do two coats of this background um, because blending this is going to be a lot harder um, because of the colors that we're using. So just bear that in mind, okay? So don't, don't get too hard on yourself if the first time you do this, um, it's not perfectly blended. Um, if you think you can do it in one go and you like it after one go, then you can keep it. But most likely, I'm anticipating probably doing this um, twice. So right in the middle here, I'm gonna go ahead and put this white. And I'm just going to put it in this whole section. And then I'm going to take some yellow. And I'm just going to mix it in going to take a little bit of this pink and mix it in with the yellow just going around in circles I'm trying my best to go around in a circle to mimic that kind of those brush marks and I'm just going to fill in the rest of this with this pink And what's cool about doing um, this twice is that if the first round of colors are too light or too dark or maybe aren't the colors you wanted, you can use your second coat to fix it. So I can tell that the colors that I created are a little bit too orange when I put it on the canvas. It looked fine on, off the canvas, but as I put it on the canvas, um, they are a bit too orange. Now granted, they are more orange on the camera than they are in person, but even just looking at in person, they are still, it's a little bit more orange than I anticipated wanting. So I get to fix that in the second round of paint. I also feel like it's a little bit too dark. And all my strokes are going in that circle. go back in with my white and I'm just going to pull this yellow out a little bit. So I just grab a little bit of white, mix it in, in the middle.
All right, so while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and remix. Now I'm gonna use what I have, this pink that I have, and I'm gonna add more pink and I'm gonna make it lighter because this is a little bit too dark, a little bit darker than I wanted it, which is really cool. It's the cool thing about knowing that you're doing two coats because you can kind of do the first coat without feeling the pressure to make that first coat like you know oh well i already did it so i guess i can't change the color um they're like there's no pressure to make that color the perfect color it's just like well this is close and now that it's on the canvas i can be a little bit more critical and be like okay so while i thought i liked this color it's a little bit too dark so I need to add that white color and it's a little bit too orange, which means I need to add more pink. I am doing the, um, the sides just so that it can be consistent when I'm adding that second coat of color. Okay, so I'm going to rinse out my brush while I mix up this next color. So I have my, my new color. I think the color that I have on here is actually the color of the cloud that's like right here. almost dry. So why don't we, while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and create the purple color that of the um, of the clouds. So while that's while we're waiting for that to dry. Um, which I'm just going to take some of this background pink and I'm going to add a little bit of this blue to it. I might need a purple. So I got my violet. Purple is very, very like dull. So if you need to add some like black and white to make it even more dull, more of like a gray, you can always do that. Because the pink that I was adding was our sky pink, which has white in it. So if you add black to it, it makes it more gray. I think that's a pretty okay color. I'm just going to mix a little bit of white 
in over here so I can just get a different shade of it. is dry now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the yellow first because I can always come back in and put in the um, the yellow or I mean sorry the white so I'm going to focus on this yellow here There's the yellow. And now we're going to go ahead and put in this pink. I'm going to rinse out my brush so I get all that yellow off. And go in with my pink. And I'm going to put the pink all the way around without touching the yellow first. Once you start touching the yellow, it starts turning to orange. So you gotta get that you gotta get that pink all the way around it before you start blending it in. Once you're ready, you can start blending. Those two sections together. Once you have that blended, then you can rinse out your brush and go back to your pink and fill in the rest of your sky with your pink. And just as like a personal preference, I'm still going in the same direction. Even though I'm not like blending anything right now, I'm still painting all my strokes in the same direction that I did the first time. the sides to match front. And 
going to go ahead and switch my brush over to a filbert and I'm going to put in my my sun And you can do a perfect circle by taking your brush and making one making one side kind of stay in the middle and then going around in a circle. It takes some practice, but it's definitely doable. I'm going to go ahead and take some white and yellow and just kind of put it around the outer edge of the sun just to soften it up just ever so slightly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a bunch of clouds in here. So you're going to grab your cloud brush, you're rinsing out your other brushes that you might not use for a while. <laughs> and I'm going to take take some of these other colors and you can start with white if you want to Just to barely just brush the canvas. Start with a little bit, and if you can't see it, you can always add more. your brush, you can dab your brush, you can use your purple over here to see if it's a color that you want to use in other places. And I think that that's a good color. It's going to be a little bit more bold and bring it up a little bit higher.
on the horizon, you can add this is, this is the dry brush technique that I was talking about. Um, you just kind of dry brush little bits and pieces. You just start building that up. The trick is to not have very much paint on your brush. going to keep adding adding those different elements your different colors you can add little clouds up above down below You'll, you'll notice there's kind of two colors of clouds. And that's just by having those different contrasts. I'm gonna wait till this um, dries so that I can put a little bit of a darker element to it. I'm going to take that original color that we did for the background and kind of place it up here. places too. We've done that if you would like to use your um, your tape go ahead and get that out we'll be using that in just a bit for now I'm going to make some space on my palette I'm just going to scrape this half of it off
favorite things about this palette is being able to clean it off during class. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead and make our beautiful C colors. Um, I'm going to be using... Actually, give me one second. I forgot I wanted to do another coat of this purple. Let's go ahead and make our um, pretty blue C. I'm going to get out some blue and some green, phthalo blue and like a bright green. And then I'm also going to be adding white to it. So I have mainly, mainly my blue, a little bit of green, and a little bit of white. So start there, we'll see where we end up. Got this really pretty dark teal, turquoise. Oh, this is like my favorite color right now, but I want it to be lighter than that, so. So pretty. Um, okay, I'm going to add some white to this. I'm going to take some of this and just put it off to the side in case I want to use that dark, that dark of it. I'm going to keep adding white to this. Okay, this is pretty much the color that I need. I'm going to take some of this and add a little bit of green to it. And I'm going to add a little bit more white as well to the green. So now we have like a blue and a green. Um, just like before, we're going to do two coats of this. But the first thing I need to do is put a layer of white on this so that, um, so that I have like a clean slate to start with. So I'm going to go here. And this is pretty much straight across. Okay, good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this white going to put this on first so that when we put on our blue it's going to bit it's going to go on a little bit easier
right, I'm gonna go ahead and start down here. And I can already tell that it's not light enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some, some light to it. go ahead and add this really dark blue to the back of it, like the, the top edge. And you can add it anywhere else in this too to add some of that, um, those kind of waves. and then you can blend it all together, but don't blend too much. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the tape off. And this will give me some time to go over that line if I need to, if I need to go over it um, at all. And I'm going to, I'm gonna go over this part So now that I have that, I'm going to add a little bit of white over here. You can do this while it's still um, while it's still wet. You can add some white, or you can wait until it dries. It's totally up to you. Um, this depends on if you want it a little bit more blended in, or if you want it to stand out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take this same blue and I'm going to, when I'm putting this on, I'm doing it in the direction of like the wave coming up. Go into my green.
and I'm going to use the same pink that we used for the background, just a little bit more white in here. And I'm just going to blend that in for the sandy area. And you can come behind yourself with some white. brighten up the middle part that's kind of reflecting the sun. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, small filbert, I'm going to grab some white I'm going to go ahead and put on that mist. As well as kind of the details in the wave. We're just going to dab our way up. I'm just continuing to kind of dab and add the water texture. With the same brush, you're just going to add some water like strokes. It's like some water lines. Use a smaller brush to add little, um, these little bubble line things that if you want. You can get as detailed as you want.
right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break from that. I think that's how I want it to be. I'm gonna take a large brush with white and go ahead and cover up all of the white sand. This is a white beach. And I'm okay with a little bit of um, blue being in my sand. I will be able to come by later with pure white and cover up any um, spots that I want like to be completely white and add that, um, that effect on. I'm just going to add this pretty much all over. Um, and while this is going on, we're also going to add this blue. So while this is all wet, you're going to add your blue to your, um, your white while it's still wet in the places that need it. So like this area, If you ever need to blend stuff, you can always just rinse out your whole brush and then just blend where those two kind of meet, just softening that edge. I'm just using the same blue as the sea. Might as well. It kind of looks different, but it, it is it is the same. So that's pretty much that because a lot of this is going to be covered with our um, with our grass.
right. So this is looking great. Let's go ahead and finish up with some grass and then our palm trees. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move a couple of these colors that I'm not going to be using. Or they're all dried out, whatever the case. Okay, let's go ahead and get some brown in here. So we'll need our brown, our green, and then yellow. And I already have green and yellow on here. too much brown. <laughs> so I'm going to put some of this back. This is my raw umber, and then I'm going to add, let's see, we want a couple different ones. We want one that's a little bit more green, one that's a little bit more of a brown, and then a darker version of it, or more yellow, sorry, and then a darker version of it. So I'm going to add green and yellow to it and just see where we are, where we're living. Now I'm not going to like say how much because I might have a different amount of brown on my uh, palette than you might have. Okay, so I think this is good for the darkest color. So I'm just going to put some of that aside. Um, I think I need to add some white to this to see where we're at. I think this is really great for the green, but I do think it needs to be even lighter. Maybe that's a good yellow color. Colors are all very subtly different, um, but I think these are good enough for now. I can always add more detail. Uh, so I essentially have three different colors of like a brown. I have a darker brown that's got like greens and yellows in it. Um, they're all they all have the same colors. It's all the brown, yellow, green, and white, but they all have different amounts of it. So this one is a little bit more of a green. This one's more of a yellow, and this one's more of a brown like a darker one so i'm going to get out some white just so i can light some of these colors up um, kind of as we going um, i'm going to grab my small round pointed brush i'm going to start with this green and i'm just going to
just some color over here. I'm going to go ahead and over here on my palette, I'm going to add some white to the screen just so I can add a little bit of some contrast within it. I'm just going to add little bits and pieces. I'm going to go ahead and switch my brush to a filbert brush that I like doing for fur and grass. Get wet, so if you have one of those brushes, that might be helpful. I'm just going to go ahead and add this in different areas. So this brush specifically is really nice because it's very, uh, I use it for stippling and texture. So it pulls apart very easily. So I can make grass type um, textures with it, which is like really nice. You do have to make sure you have the right consistency of paint to water. going to use this all over and already it's starting to look real colorful.
just going back and forth between the different colors, the greens, the yellow, the brown. mostly have the paint on the top of my brush and I'm just brushing up. Go ahead and add some of these darks, dark colors around this area. So at this point, I'm just adding it in spaces that I feel like just makes sense. Making it feel natural in the space. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this blue and I'm going to add some texture with just my biggest brush. I'm going to dab it on there before before I go. I'm just going to add some texture to the sand.
lastly, the last thing we're going to do um, down below is add some long grass. So go ahead and grab your favorite um, brush or your favorite liner brush. I'm going to go ahead and grab some, pick one of the colors and then add some white to it. And then you're just going to add little bits and pieces of light in the dark and dark in the light. Okay, so once you get all of this, then we'll go ahead and do our, um, our palm fronds. Don't feel like you need to add too much, just a couple here and there. So keep going on that. I can hear my son uh, calling my name. So go ahead and keep working on that. Um, you can also add dark ones, um, and then I will be right back, okay? My son asking if quiet time was over. I nope, almost. <laughs> I'm thinking some of this needs to be a little bit lighter, so if you can see it just a little bit more. And if you're having troubles um, getting it to transfer on the canvas without it looking um, either super thick or um, or uh, maybe it's not going on very well, try adding a little bit of water. And that might help the consistency of the paint.
And I really do think that these small little lines really, really do like bring it to life. it. Let's go ahead and put in our palm fronds. You could leave it like this if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in our palm fronds now and this is a pretty easy thing to do. You're just It just takes a little bit of time. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to grab your black You're gonna grab your black and mix in some white, uh, some, not some water. I almost said white, water with it. Um, and then just going to use your your liner brush or if you wanted to use a different brush that's totally fine too and the first one goes from about here down Remember that if you mess up, you can always get a clean brush. Pictured the tree was over to the right coming on. So you can start at the bigger end or you can start at the smaller end. And you'll just start adding your palm fronds, little leaves on them.
And just like any sort of nature, it's not going to look perfect. Each one should look different. And you're going to have to go back in after every other, you know, leaf, depending on how long they are. And you're just going to continue that process. Like I said, it takes a long time. It takes some time, but it really does kind of frame the whole picture, which is nice.
one more. Start small. So a lot of this is just like a repetitive motion. Hopefully this gives you a lot of practice for line work. what it feels like to have a good consistency of heat for your line work. Remember that not each leaf is going to be the, like the same size or the same shape um, as the rest of them. Like in nature, it's very natural to have leaves of all different shapes and sizes. And some get bent in the wind and some are just different shapes, right? That's one of my favorite things about doing nature paintings is that you can be a little bit more relaxed when doing this sort of thing.
I think if I were to sell this painting, I would probably paint the sides black just because it definitely gets messy over the side of it because all of the lines going across the side it's really hard to like create it in a way that like makes sense without it looking messy um, so if anyone buys this I'll probably paint the sides black um, I think it would just it just looks a little bit more professional in my opinion. And that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to see yours, especially this bottom portion. I really enjoyed painting. I think the grass was probably my favorite part of the painting. Because um, once you put that in, it just like comes to life. So if you're not a part of my uh, Facebook community, please go over there and join my uh, Facebook group. It's a free group. Um, I post regularly um, about upcoming classes. So if you want to be um, invited to those um, on Facebook and get reminders via Facebook, that's definitely the place to be. Um, and if you're anything like me and need those reminders, <laughs> that is where you'll need to be for that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I will be posting a picture of my work. Um, in one of the albums and that is where you can add yours and it'll all be in the same folder um, you can do that or you can just post it on the regular uh, page but if you post it in the album then when other people click on the album to see um, other people's work yours will be in there um, for others to see so yeah thank you so much for joining me we will see you next week next week we're doing a watercolor class we're doing a watercolor hamster so if you like doing animals um, or you want to dip your toes into some watercolor, um, it's a beginner class. It should be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, we will see you next week. Um, yeah, have a great rest of your night and we'll see you then. Bye guys.